I glorify you. Yeah, the road course, yeah. Philippians, fourth chapter. When I begin to do my lesson this week, at a road course, chapter, I said, Father, what's on your heart for your people? Oh my God, my God. He said, my people is losing their peace. They're losing their joy. They're using, losing their love. Above all things, they're losing their hope. I want you to assure them today that they're still yet peace. They're still yet love, joy, and hope with expectation. You gotta have expectation for these things. Even in your love, you gotta mature and develop to that place. Everybody can say I love you, but it's a maturing thing. It's a developing thing. We gotta discipline our flesh that when we get hurt, we don't keep that stuff in our heart. So we mature in love. Yes, he give it to us, but we gotta mature in this thing because why? We make the choose. We make the choice to forgive or not to forgive. We make the choice to love or not to love. When Jesus went to the cross, glory to God. It was God who made the choice. Yes. To sit is only begotten Son. Only. Yes. Only. Yes. Son. In the name of Jesus. Philippians 4. By now, we should be there. If you're not there, holler at me. I'll wait on you. All right? Solomon's make good sense. Okay, we're going to start about at the fourth verse. I'm reading out my New King James Version. Let's shop around sometimes. And it starts with the fourth verse. It says, Rejoice in the Lord always. Rejoice. And again, rejoice. I will say, rejoice. rejoice. What did it say? Rejoice, rejoice in the Lord always. always. Is it always now? Come on and rejoice. rejoice. I will Ooh, say, Rejoice. Yes. Let your gentleness be known to all men. To some, Oh. To all men, the Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. How are we going to respond with thanksgiving? Amen. Let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. Drop down to the eighth verse. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are good report, if there is any virtue and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. The things which you learn and receive and heard and saw in me, as Apostle Paul was speaking, these do. And the and the God of peace will be with you. And the God of who? Peace. peace. And the God of who? Peace. peace. Will be with you. Let's drop down to, okay, let's drop down to the 11th verse. And the 11th verse say, not that I speak in regard to need, for I have learned, this is what Apostle Paul is saying, for I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I have learned in whatever state I am to be content. I know how to be a best and I know how to be a bad. Everywhere and in all things, I've learned both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. Glory to God, 13 verse where we all say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened us. See, when we look at the story, glory to God, we see Apostle Paul is writing from Rome. He is in prison. Yes. You can see, have a seat. He is in prison. He's writing from Rome. In prison. He is in a difficult circumstances. Yes. He is writing to Philippi, glory to God, and if you look, we see in Philippians, we got four chapters. Within those four chapters, the word joy was repeated over 18 times. Joy, joy. joy. He's in prison, but he got joy. He's in a difficult situation, but he got joy. Oh my God. And he writes to them to encourage them to have joy. So we look at the church of Philippi, 
God, we see, glory to God, yeah. that there was a dispute between two women, and it was privately a disagreement. Mm -hmm. But Apostle Paul dealt with that thing publicly. Some things you have to deal with publicly. And glory to God, he did it in gentleness. He did it in love. Why? Because he knew it was important that unity will be in the church. If there's a disagreement, it's a cover up. You have now defiled unity. It will hinder your peace. It will hinder your joy. And so, glory to God, Apostle Paul dealt with it. Now, um, the church at Philippi was a church that he called joy, loved. And, and so often, glory to God, so often we look at a church and we say, man, that church is full of love. That church is full of joy. That church is full of unity. Apostle Paul saw Philippian, that church. But no matter how much joy, how much peace, how much love inside a church, there is no perfect church. You and I make up the church. We're not perfect, so the church can't be perfect. There's only one perfect. But then we got to come together and reason things and be unified. That's where our joy comes. Our joy comes through unity. Our joy comes through, yeah, he or she might have rubbed me the wrong way, but I, I come too far to lose out for Sue. I came too far to lose out for Joe. So that's where you can't carry unforgiveness in your heart. I said, Lord, talk to me today. Talk to me. He said, everybody talk in unity. Even the White House ain't unified. The dog house ain't unified. Because if you mess up with this system, they have to kill you and kill yeah. your family. Yeah. 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 So we, where we find where our joy is being taken away or where our joy is being shattered, it is in our homes. Because if you can't get your husband and wife on one accord, uh -oh. it's going to disturb your peace. Uh -oh. I, I, I'm yes, talking real. Uh -oh. yes, I'm not talking to nobody. God, yes, he told me to preach his word. So wherever it falls, it falls. Right. Even if it falls in my house, your house, it falls. He's only telling us so we can get it right. That's right. That's right. He says, glory to God, you can lose your peace in your home. Mm -hmm. You ever said, oh man, I was just so happy. Oh man, things were going so good. Out of nowhere. Thank you, baby. Out of nowhere, something happened. Mm -hmm. Have you ever had something unexpected that happened right in the midst of peace? While you celebrating, you so happy, you so full of joy. And out of nowhere, the enemy come in. He comes in through the children. He comes in through a phone call. You can get a phone call. Boom! Somebody just died. That disturbed your peace. Though we know they gotta leave here, but it disturbed your peace. You go to the doctor. You get some um, some news. You're waiting on um, a report to return. Waiting on the result. And when the result comes, it's not in your favor. You go to work and find out. Susie trying to backstab you to get your job, get your position. You go to work, find out you did all you could on the job, and now you and the manager in in with it. Come on, <laughs> come on. Out of nowhere. Come on. Then they blame something on you. You don't know. You lost. I don't know what you're talking about. There is no perfect church. There's no perfect member. That's it. That's it. That's it. What makes us perfect? What makes us perfect? Christ Jesus. Come on. What makes us perfect in Christ Jesus? He says this in Romans 5 and 1. Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's our first peace. Yeah. Salvation. 